Hello, my name is Leroy Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. Uh, in this episode here, what I want to do is talk a little bit more about JFK assassination. And, you know, trying to figure out some things, you know, in the comments down below. If you have, you know, something you want to say, go ahead and say it. You know, like I said, everybody has their own opinion and stuff like that. Just please don't use foul language into your comments or put other people down if they, after they put their opinion on there and stuff like that, you know, you know, please give them respect, you know, and please honor their opinions, which I always honor somebody's opinion. But like I said, when I look at the JFK assassination, and I've been thinking about this for the past week, week and a half, as I'm, you know, making my list of what I want to accomplish when I'm down here filming the documentary and everything is you know, people's been emailing me stuff. Well, look at this location, look at that location, whatever. But we're losing the reality of the case. When I start looking at different locations and stuff, let me show you something. Let me pull this up here. Okay. As people seen, I made a video about the drain, you know, coming inside the storm drain here. And then I just got done making a video before this, talking about coming behind a picket fence and showing 14 different locations of where they claim the fatal headshot came from, you know, and stuff, you know. But, like I said, there's no evidence to back any of these stories up, okay. And, you know, I covered a lot of this stuff, okay. So, you know, it's not like I don't want to keep on backtracking myself because I've already backtracked myself time and time again when the claims made and everything else to go look for evidence to see if there was anything to back up and then find no evidence, but let me show you something, and here's what I mean. Why look any further? Why go into depth? Because as I point out, let me pull this map up first. As I point out, okay, we're never going to know who was ex actually behind the assassination of JFK. Okay, we're not going to know that. There's always speculations out there of who was behind stuff. Just like we also know today that no one's going to pay the penalty for the assassination anyway because the assassins that was there that day and we know Oswald's not around no more are probably not around themselves they're already probably passed away one thing or another so we know that's not going to happen like I said only thing a researcher could do is piece it together and figure out what exactly took place that day but let me show you something here I'll pull this map up here and I'm going to pull up, let's say, if I got the other image here, I should have it here. Yeah, let's pull this up right here. Okay, we're going to pull up two things here. We're going to pull up a map, and we're going to pull up this one right here. Okay, as I've shown people in my investigation and my research, I have found four locations with five coming in. Okay. And I've also found photographic evidence of 13 shots fired. Now, the whole assassination took place with under 18 seconds. Okay. Took place with under 18 seconds. That's the whole assassination. Within that time, 13 shots were fired. And by five different gunmen in four different locations. Okay. Each one of the shots are accountable for. The two shots inside of shelter number three are accountable for. Fatal head shot to GFK and a shot to Governor Conley that struck him in the back as he was turned off to his left. Uh, Oswald's two shots, both shots to GFK, one in the back of GFK's back and one in the back of GFK's head. Okay, shots accountable for. Uh, the five shots from the gunman on the rooftop of the county wreck is building. The strike shots, two shots to the grass area, two shots to the uh, manhole cover, concrete, one shot to the curb, accountable for. Okay. Uh, second, uh, the gunman on the second floor of the county records building. One shot to JFK, one shot to Governor Conley, two distraction shots to the steps and the sign on the lamppost, accountable for. So, what I don't understand is, you know, people want me to look at this location, that location. There's no sense in looking at different locations, to be honest with you, because the pure simple fact of it is this. 
no matter which way you look at it, on that particular day, November 22nd, 1963, okay, which is on a Friday, all right, the assassination of JFK, there was 13 shots fired from four different locations by five different gunmen. This is a fact. This can be seen and proven by photographic evidence. We know the babushka lady set off a signal. We know there was another person on the corner of Elm and Houston had to direct people to look out on the 6th floor Texas School Book Depository. And we know that Oswald set up the decoy rifle for them to find by the staircase there so they think the assassin ran down the stairs. But like I said, what are people want to look? What does people want? more of, okay? Like I said, we're not going to find who was actually behind the JFK assassination. There was no other shots taken that day, just the 13th. There was no other gunman in no different other locations than the locations that I found. Because if all 13 shots are accountable for, all the locations of the gunman are accountable for, what are people looking for? That's what I don't understand. Because I even got some researchers saying this and saying that. But what are they looking for? Because there's only 13 shots fired. And there's only five gunmen there. The gunmen's location has been proven. Their shots has been proven. All shots are covered. All locations of gunmen are covered. Why continue looking in different locations? Which I've already done. Don't get me wrong. I've already done. I've looked up and down in every films and every images of the Dow Tex building. I looked in every image and film is done of the Texas School Book Depository. I looked up and down every film that shows the county records building. I look up and down every film that shows the picket fence area, the shelter area, the Pelagora there. Looking over every person's step in the films and images from different views. Okay, seeing where they end up being that time frame in each film, each image, and everything else like that. Done it all. And everything that I pull out is right here. It's always been the evidence in front of the public's eye, as I pointed out. But a lot of people, even today, they'll say, which is like I said, is their opinion. Okay, their opinion. I go over the shots, like here's shot number one, showing the location where that shot came from. Showed a mark, that location where that shot made contact with, and it also made contact with JFK. You know, I go in detail on each one of the shots where they made contact with. I even show two shots being fired at the same time here. Two shots being fired at the same time here from different gunmen, different locations, aimed at different locations. You know, two shots here, one shot there, two more shots there, one shot there, you know. I go in detail and I have eyewitness counts to back it up and everything else. Again, people says, well, no, this or no, that, you know, there's got to be this, there's got to be that. And I even go pinpoint each exactly one shot, make contact here, 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 two shots, make contact here, one shot, 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 make contact here, two shots, make contact here, two shots, make contact here. I go into details cover all 13 shots and back them all up by photographic evidence of every shot that was occurred that day just like right here we have the two shots of JFK I mean the shot to get JFK which is the fatal head shot and a shot to Governor Conley all lined up in the locations where they, the bullets made contact with where the gunmen were at where the eyewitnesses was at at the time the angles of the shots and everything else like that, everything lines up and everything falls in place and it fits up. So that takes care of the fatal headshot. That takes care of the shot to the back of Governor Conley as he's turned off to his left. That takes care of the two main shots that people talk about. The main shot they talk about is the fatal headshot JFK, which I show photographic evidence of where the shots came from. We can see the shots being taken place at the same time. We can see the gunman with the rifle in his hand. Excuse me, I got sneeze. I made my other video and I had all my sleeves. I went into time frames, okay, show exactly when each image was taken, like all of Jen's image number seven here, was taken by frame 394 uh, to Spruder film. I go in depth and I go in detail. 
I cover every square inch, every square second, excuse me. Mm, I know I'm trying to sneeze. Um, I covered every square inch. I covered every shot. I covered every location of the gunman and stuff like that. But people still continue on and say, well, no, that fatal head shot. Okay, people does not want to believe that that fatal head shot came from the gunman inside of shelter number three. Which I'll pull up. Let's say, where is that? It was in here. It was in here. Maybe it's in my next file over. No, it ain't in that file. It's in this file. Sorry, I, like I said, I got tons and tons of files. Okay, a lot of files. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and pull this one out back up right here. Okay. Nobody wants to believe that the fatal headshot to JFK come from side of shelter number three. When we have photographic evidence showing the gunman with the rifle in his hand. Find his rifle from that location. That bullet make contact with the right side of JFK's head. And pushing him off to the left as we see in the films and stuff. But people don't accept that. They want to still accept these claims that there was a gunman behind a picket fence area. They still want to accept that there was a gunman inside the drain, the storm drain. They want to accept there was a gunman on the south side. Okay. They're continuously talking about that one fatal headshot because basically that's all people's been talking about. Just like I just got done making a video about that, about where it all started at from the fatal headshot to JFK. That's where it all started out. Frank 313 is prudent from. This is where all these false claims started from and everything else. But they still want to consider uh, shots coming from the south side or from the storm drain or from the Dow Tex building, the fatal headshot to JFK or behind the picket fence area or under the overpass. They want to continue pushing these when we already know that the shots came from shelter number three. We already know that. Excuse me, I got to take a drink. And the reason why we know that is because we've seen. We can see it in the films and images where that shot came from. But they're still complaining and they're still arguing with me. And, you know, and I'm talking about emails and IMs. People call me dumb and idiot and everything else. No, the shot came from the drain, cause especially when I made a drain video, the storm drain video. I got emails and stuff from people saying, no, that uh, fatal headshot came from the storm drain because this person said so. You know, so I said, well, I wrote him back and said, did this person have any uh, evidence so I may see it? Because if I'm wrong, I'm willing to admit it. Well, there's no evidence to prove, but that's where he said it came from. Okay, fine. Same thing as the south side, you know. Well, the ballistic says that the shot came from over here. Well, the ballistic says that a lot of shot, the fatal headshot JFK came from all different locations. But when they did their... Um, ballistic test, they only used the one vehicle with only one person in the vehicle. That's all they used. Then you have the other subjects in the car and thing else you see here. When I place the subjects in there, as you see here, I have everybody in their locations and how they were sitting at that time. <coughs> Excuse me. How they were sitting at that time. I need another drink. Getting dried out talking a lot. Excuse me for a moment. It's not important. <laughs> but anyway, I put everything back in their perspective, you know, where it was at that time of the fiddle headshot. They don't, they, you know, eliminate Governor Conley, Mrs. Conley, Jackie, Kennedy, the driver and the passion in the front. They eliminate all of them and just have JFK in the limo by himself. With no follow-up cars, nobody in the surroundings, nothing. They do the ballistic test. Oh, yeah, there, there's your proof. It proves that the shot came from the south side. Or prove the shot came from the storm drain or one thing or another. It doesn't prove anything. It's just, if you do it that way, the shot can come from anywhere in, Del in Dilly Plaza there. So, see, that's why I got to put everything back in perspective. That's why I got to look at everything the way it's supposed to have been back then during that time. 
I just want to make this video here to point out the facts of for a fact was uh, five gum in there, 13 shots. That's it. No more, no less. Okay, there was no gunman behind a picket fence area. There was no evidence to prove that, just a story. There was no gunman inside the drain area. Like I said, if you don't believe in my research, that's fine and dandy. You know, that's your opinion and stuff like that. Okay, because I had somebody that was going to be making comments, wants to make comments on my videos, but the last time they made comments on there, everybody was putting him down, saying bad things about him. And, and even his wife, you know, she also follows my research as well. And she made a few comments on my old videos and stuff, and they was actually calling her out her name and stuff. That's one of the reasons why I don't like when people call people out the name and stuff. We're all adults here. Let's, be, let's show each other respect. Let you know if everybody has their opinion. Let them say their opinion. That's it. You don't have to use foul language in your comments or anything like that. But, you know... They wrote me and stuff like that because they want to make comments and stuff, but they're afraid to because uh, people says, oh, well, you know, he's wrong about this. He's wrong about that. You know, I even sit there and made videos time and time again where I was willing to put my research up to anybody else's research. That that researcher come to me would do a face off of it. Everybody wants to say it that way. How, that's how they say a face off, I guess, and challenge their research against my research. And we'll see which one scales way more at the end. Okay, I've, I've I've made challenges like that before. I've talked to researchers. I've offered them fifty percent of my research, you know, and they still t don't want to do it because they're always worried about that fatal headshot. Because that fatal headshot had to come from the south side. That fatal headshot had to come from the Dallas Tech building. That fatal headshot had to come from uh, behind a picket fence. Okay when the evidence shows us where the fatal headshot came from but because all they're worried about is that fatal headshot look what they miss here other evidence that other shots were fired so you see that's what I'm saying when it comes to my research stuff and people don't understand when I post my research and stuff like that I'm not posting it to start an argument I'm not posting it for people to make fun of other people I posted because this is what can be seen. This is what can be. This is what really happened that day. Thirteen shots fired, five gunmen, four different locations. That's it. No storm drain. There is no evidence to back it up. There's no evidence to back up a gunman behind a picket fence area. We could talk about eyewitnesses. I could point out all these eyewitnesses and their stories was false. Okay, I could point out a lot of facts in that stuff, but it's not about that. It's about trying to figure out what took place that day not be who's behind it because like I said we're never gonna know who's behind it the people that was involved in GFK assassination they're not going to be held accountable for anything now because most of them's gone so all we can do today is figure out what happened that's all we can do don't forget that like button don't forget to subscribe don't forget to tell your friends about it. share this information all my other information with your family friends and relatives Always in the description down below, you find a site where you can order my book, Evans the Conspiracy. Only book you ever need in JFK assassination. And we still have 24 hours left of the GoFundMe account. If you still want to be a part of the history, uh, help us out with this documentary and everything else. Uh, in the site down below, you're going to find, uh, on the description down below, you'll find a site where you can make your donation. Remember, $30 donation, you get your name and the credits, plus you get a free copy of the DVD once it's done. Don't forget that like button, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to tell your friends about us. Thank you, and have a pleasant, pleasant day.